as, as far as living in the South goes, I mean, it, it's, it's everywhere. And these, mm-hmm. these people are just ignorant in their ways and they're not going to fucking change. The miser, the the miser of the miser. How are you doing today? Your album is coming soon as we're talking. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Feel good about the album. It's good to be here. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. My pleasure. Now, album number two coming out August 23rd. Um, Many bands will tell me that a second album is tough to make or is one of the hardest ones to make in the career of a band like you've you've spent a lot of time building up to that first album which becomes like a bit of a greatest hits collection of everything you've done so far and then you release that album and all of a sudden it's like oh great people like it people want to have more and there's there's pressure there's time deadlines <laughs> uh unless yeah. you have like a million leftover songs of, of everything that came before your first album uh so you know, help me understand for you guys, like, was this a tough one to make uh, or not? It took longer than we anticipated uh, it to take, for sure. Um, I think that, you know, we had, we definitely had a handful of riffs in our pocket, um, but fleshing the songs out as a whole mm-hmm. definitely took a lot longer uh, than anticipated. Uh, also, we, we're kind of like spread all over. You know, we have three guys that live in Central South Carolina. I'm in the upstate. And then uh, one of the other guys lives in um, uh, North Carolina. So getting us all together in the same room is can can be difficult at times uh, to really flesh things out. Um, So, I mean, a lot of it was mostly a lot of it was mostly put together by uh, our uh, bass player, Defiler, our drummer and Fester and Grave Pisser. They they fleshed most of it out um Mm -hmm. and then we were you know we would be all together in the same room we'd finally get the chance to be very productive it just you know it took a while for for that to happen because we you know typically we'll only have one or two days a month where we can make that happen yeah 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 well i mean i guess maybe just a uh a silver lining to that is that it keeps the raw feeling and the live feeling. <laughs> right. I mean, so, some of these some of these songs we didn't even finish until we were in the studio. Another, you know, milestone with this album is that it is the debut album where Metal Blade is involved all of a sudden. Uh, you know. I, I assume that many of these songs were at least partly, uh, you know, conceived before all of that stuff, you know, came to be. But um, now that this album is being, you know, supported and promoted by Metal Blade, does that come with like late in the game pressure? Uh, because all of a sudden there, there are expectations and there's a much broader reach. Does that give you a different, you know, emotional roller coaster towards this launch than the previous one? Man, I don't think so. I think that, I mean, we were going to put this album out whether it was right. with them or, or anybody else. Um, these these are, I mean, we're, we're going to stay true to what we are and what we do. And if it's just like with the first album, if it's not up to our expectation or it's not, you know, up to, up to our bar that we set for ourselves, you know, it's a, like we we scrap songs all the time right. um just like just like most bands do you know but uh i, th- I think that this is the album that was going to come out regardless uh of of any of that you know the fact that you guys are you know pick it up let's call it pine metal blade um you know another example of this let's call it golden wave that we're seeing globally of black and speed thrash or whatever you want to call it you know uh with bands like i mean i'm wearing a hell ripper t-shirt uh yeah, is a perfect it. example of that uh but butcher from belgium uh knife from germany like there's like this this kind of music kind of first came to be with like or and war and all like all these guys in the mid 90s but it never really got the foothold that all of a sudden it seems to have right now um I have a feeling that festivals like Keep It True in Europe and Hell's Heroes in in the States have something to do with that. Um, 
because it's not that your audience is 60 year old guys that were around in the early 80s um do you feel that that today is a the climate for this music today is better than 10 years ago man i don't know if the quality is, <laughs> is still as good but no I, i i agree with you i think that um It, it is something that's just kind of taken off right now. Yeah. Um, we're seeing a boom in it. It's the same thing with just with this, you know, new wave of death metal too. It's just, exactly. you know, there, there are these waves and things come and go in waves. Um, you know, yeah. Bands like Venom never, you know, I feel like now they're not as doing as much or do playing as big a shows as they as they were 20 years ago mm -hmm. um and and you have bands that are that took all the influence from them and they're the ones that are playing the big shows i i just think it's you know it's it's what it is is these kids come up um and they're they're listening to what's out right now and maybe not necessarily diving back in time mm -hmm. um But if they did, they'd be like, oh, shit. No, these, you know, this came first. Right, this, right, is right. Even, this is even better. But, uh, you know, because I kind of, I, I typically stick to the old stuff personally. Uh, there's a handful of bands uh, that are doing it now that I that I truly enjoy. Um, and I'm not super into that whole new wave of death metal that's striking the, the world at the moment. But um, I think there are a lot of great, black thrash black speed metal speed metal bands that are doing it at this time you know you mentioned that you know this album took a little longer to make than you were expecting maybe or i wanted to ask about uh about you know how this whole thing came together because there's one song on the album i mean i had a chance obviously to listen to the full album Yeah. that stands out and which is the epic closing song which is you know you guys are known for like you know in your face fast you know ragers uh, shorter songs this one is yeah. over eight minutes long but it <laughs> yeah. doesn't you know it it, it it also flies by and so for for you guys as a muscle like you know it's very different writing a long song versus a, versus a short song like what's harder for you like just forcing yourself to stay short and editing 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 or or writing a long song that stays interesting if you will like those are very different muscles like what's that like for you well uh that song in particular that song came together in the studio um okay. and and with the help of our engineer uh chase mcguckin and um that song i mean it, it kicks off like a demiser song i mean it right. sounds straight up like a demiser song and then it kind of trails more into like more of like an you know there's kind of like an eye or a mortal type riff towards the end and then you know it kind of fades out with with that you know type of vibe and type of style um probably our most eclectic song that we've put together um definitely our longest uh <laughs> but I, i i think that you know it was something that we wanted to do because we kind of wanted to leave the door cracked for us to kind of branch out and and mm -hmm. other directions as well without painting ourselves or playing ourselves into a corner yeah 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 so that's interesting that you say that because you know uh there's another way that you allow yourself to be a little bit different which is the interlude you get some almost like latin vibes at times that can come out with that um but there is there is a brand now for the miser like you know it's hard for you guys to say like oh let's like let's let's record a country song you know all of a sudden that that wouldn't necessarily fit anymore um like do you feel that you guys can you know release all the creativity you have in you with the miser or is sometimes you know playing a pretty specific very specific kind of music is that sometimes limiting like like what's that like for you personally we can branch off a little bit you know what i mean i mean we're gonna stick to our roots which is yeah. just you know evil black and speed metal right but um i mean we're we're gonna stick to that that's what we do it's what we have fun doing um but we can branch off a little bit i mean if it's if it's good and it sounds good and it still flows we'll we'll use it 
you know, mm-hmm. whether it's like um, more uh, new wave of British heavy metal or, you know, rock and roll or, you know, black metal, whatever it may be, if it works in the song, it's going to, we're going to use it um, and, and allow ourselves to be versatile in that way. Um, now, as far as creative outlets go, some of the guys are in other, other projects as right. well. Um, uh, Falomancer and Infester have a two piece project called Primitive Warfare that they do. Um, who just released an album uh, a mm-hmm. couple months ago uh, that's done very well. And, you know, so uh, they also have a uh, uh, Grave Pisser in those, uh, and those, and Fester are in a band called Black Eucharist as well, which is, you know, more of a black metal type style right. project. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's definitely outlets out there. And as far as country goes, that's almost all that we listen to <laughs> we just don't we just don't write and play it there you go there you go i mean it's um i think it's is it your instagram uh bio tagline or something like that it's like you know we make evil or satanic music in the bible belt um it's an interesting yeah. discrepancy uh you know i've i've, I've interviewed plenty of, of of bands from from that area and you know all of them come with their stories of overcoming you know adversary adversity whether it's because of the lyrical or imagery whether it's because of their the, the color of their skin or what have you um you know you guys have been playing this you, you, you've been active for a while now like the the local and i'm not talking about your scene but like the, the more the local acceptance um how has that evolved over time because we see this world become at the same time, the world is more inclusive than ever, and it's also more uh, fractured than ever, if you will. You know, we're very tribal these days. It's, it's right. left, left versus right, right versus wrong, black versus white, whatever. Um, like the, how, how is that, you know, evolved? Because I can imagine that a band like you guys um, raise a few eyebrows uh, in your uh, we, in your hometowns, right? Yeah, there was a, um, the, the newspaper in Colombia put out a... Uh, article about us and it raised all sorts of hell um you know and we get the whole yeah well we get the whole like (laughs) you know you boys need jesus type shit all all the time and and all that you know and you know we we brush it off i mean it doesn't people are gonna think what they think and and i mean it's the South, I mean, as, as far as living in the South goes, I mean, it, it's it's everywhere. And these mm-hmm. these people are just ignorant in their ways and they're not going to fucking change. So right. when it when it comes to that, nothing's really changed. You know what I mean? Our scene has grown bigger, you know, young people, uh, you know, come up in the scene and they start going to shows and, you know, it, it's growing for sure. Like the, you know, heavy metal and punk communities, um, they're, they're all growing, uh, which is very good to see. Um, even in Charleston, which used to have nothing, you know, there's something happening there now. Um, Columbia, uh, Greenville. I mean, mm-hmm. these are the, the bigger cities around, you know, Charlotte's always been a haven of sin. But <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, it's just, it's just, you know, as, as far as this the staple uh, type of people that you're gonna get down here, that that ain't gonna change, and it's yeah. and it's always Bible thumpers, um, and you know we're gonna keep doing what we do, like fuck that shit, mm-hmm. but you know th- they can they can do their own thing, you know we're gonna do ours, yeah, um, yeah. And, and we'll and we'll use you know their fuel to keep us going you know what i mean we're only halfway through the year and you've got this album coming out uh, later in august from a show perspective what can we keep our fingers crossed for well we're gonna lay low pretty much this year the, re- the remainder of the year we got we're playing uh, mass destruction metal fest in atlanta um uh here towards the end of the year so uh, october or november um we've got this show coming up uh in charlotte um there's one that i think hasn't been announced yet that that'll be in uh south carolina in november 
Okay. But as, as far as that, as far as that goes, you know, we're we're kind of laying low this year, um, and then uh, we are starting to plan for uh, ideas for tours and runs for next year. So we'll, we plan to hit it hard uh, next year. We're going to let this album simmer a little bit and then um, hit the road uh, the following. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, now to, to, to wrap us up and look, let's look even a little further ahead. Um, you said one of the key things that came out of, or the maybe the the mindset when you were guys were recording the the, the final song in Nominate Baphomet, um, to not you know put yourself in a corner and give yourself the opportunity to to branch out a little bit stylistically. Um, are there things that as you guys were going through that process that really resonated for you guys? Like if we are thinking ahead at like the next album, which I'm sure. You guys have already played around with. Uh, are there things that we can expect that you can already share? Well, uh, so we are in the writing process, um, just the riff writing process. As far as putting songs completely together and fleshing them out, we haven't started that mm -hmm. quite yet. Um, but we've got some some pretty violent riffs coming that way, um, and then. Uh, we're we're gonna bring a uh, song back, I believe, on this next album uh, from the demo. Okay. Uh, as well, uh, a song's called "Pernicious Raid." You can go listen to it on the demo. Demos on YouTube. Um, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna change it up a little bit uh, and and then re-release it on this uh, third album. Awesome. All right. Well, the miser, the demiser of the miser. Thank you so much for your time. I, <laughs> I really appreciate that. it. I, I bet. I bet. I bet. Um, it cracks I, me up every time. I, I, I appreciate your time today. Uh, I'm personally really excited about the album. And uh, trust me, I do not tell that to everybody that I interview. Um, I love the style that you guys are helping to bring back. Uh, and I will keep my fingers crossed to see a lot more shows announced for 2025 keep my fingers extra crossed to see shows up in canada and otherwise we'll just have to come you know to the yeah, states it's been a couple been a couple years since we've been in mm -hmm. toronto so it needs to happen again soon there we go let's do it let's get it done and i'll see you right there all right thank you so much for your time today and uh, enjoy this uh, album cycle thank you man cheers thanks for having me for watching this video click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel